All right, we are live, CJ, and we're gonna talk about, cause you reached out to me this morning, right? Sure. So yeah, we're gonna... All right, we are live, CJ, and we're gonna talk about, cause you reached out to me this morning, right? Yeah, I am getting, sure. so yeah, we're gonna... All right, we are live, Hold on. CJ, and we're gonna talk about, cause you reached out to me this morning, right? I am getting... All right, there we go, because I was getting a whole bunch of background noise. All right, so you reached out to me this morning, and what was your question to me? Uh, you had two questions for me. Yeah, I have two questions. So um, I was prospecting next to one of my um, rental properties here, and um, we had just finished the renovation and the neighbor actually came to her, wanted to see the progress in the house. I let her know that I was a real estate agent. She told me that she wasn't interested in selling. I asked her, does she have anybody who uh, could potentially be interested in selling? And she said the house next door to her and the house next door to it were owned by the same guy in the same neighborhood. And I wanted to find out a way. She was kind enough to give me his contact information, but um, I wanted to find out what would be the types of things that I should say to this individual and finding out how or if they were willing to sell at this time because I'm and in then, need of another property. Right. And then you asked me one other question, and that was, could we find other properties right. to prospect on in the specific zip code? Right. So we're in the Dallas area. So everything that we're going to do is gonna be using the tools here in Dallas. So if you're in another country or you're in another state, you can feel free to direct message me. We can look into your systems and see how to duplicate the same process. Okay. Um, but, so we're gonna look at it um, from that perspective. So a couple of things um, I mentioned to you this morning that the sweet spot in my opinion for sellers is maybe four years. Typically in the past before we've had this consistent appreciation, like significant appreciation year over year, it was a five to seven year window when most people would think about selling. Right now, we've had people sell in two years, but I think the sweet spot, like where 80% of the people will start thinking seriously is around four years or more. So that's what we're going to target in your specific area. So we're going to look up, um, you're going to, if you want to log into your Netris, so you can just mimic what I'm doing. All right, sounds good. I'm logging in now. All right, so we go into Netris. And then we're going to go to Realist Tax from there. OK. And then just give me an address. It could be your address. And we're going to smart target around that. Uh, 111. So 1111 Andrew Street. And Andrews or Andrew? Andrews with an S, plural. All right, so once we go in here, we see the property, we're gonna click on this tab that says neighbors. You tracking with me, CJ? Yep. Okay. All right, so the thing we're gonna pay attention to is the sales date right here, okay? This tells us how long that person has been in the property. The other thing that you can pay attention to, and I don't know if they still have it on here. They used to have mailing address back in the day. They may have taken that out, but if there's a mailing address, if it's different from the physical property, you know, it's probably like an investor. Um, so that could be an opportunity to talk to people about buying, you know, cause they're probably renting if they're living there. Um, so this is what I would be focused on. And I would be, I would look at these properties where the people have been in their house for at least four or more years, right? Okay. Once you find the address, you're going to do some sort of reverse lookup. Okay. I have a system. I'm going to pull it up for reverse lookup. <clears throat> Can you still see my screen? Does it say what your home's worth? What's your home worth? Or do I need to reshare? 
Uh, no, I can still see your screen. It says, what's your home worth? Yes. All right, so I'm gonna put this property address in and I'm gonna click on that. This is how I do my reverse lookup because I have... Can we use 1107 instead of 1109? Sure. We can. I can do multiple as well. Let me go back. Eleven oh seven. All right, so now I'm going to go into my back end. So any type of reverse lookup is what you'll do once you, I call this smart targeting. So I'm gonna smart target a specific area. I'm gonna look at all the neighbors. I'm gonna do the work up front because if you decide you're gonna go door knocking, you're gonna waste your time because there could be, there are people that just bought their house a year ago. So if you knock that door, that's a waste of your valuable time. So I always recommend spending time smart targeting, getting a list of addresses first before I go knock, up, knock doors. So that would be this first step, find all the properties, make a list. Second step, you can call or you can go knock, right? If you're gonna call, you need some sort of reverse lookup technology. So when I go in, I'm gonna see these addresses here. Um, why does it say Walsh Jordan? <laughs> What's Walsh Jordan in my head? That's so weird. <laughs> Because normally we would hit search for owners and it would find it. Right. That's weird. I've never seen that before. That's crazy. So Walsh is the owner now. There you go. That's crazy that it has his name on both. But anyway, you can, I'm just showing you the process, right? right. So you can either use a reverse lookup tool or you can turn around and go knock these specific doors. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when you knock, you ask me, what do I say to people? Right. right? So the first question is, do you own this property? Just to make sure they're the owner. And you, you, when you go out, you don't wanna be dressed up like, cause it may make people not wanna answer the door, right? So I would kind of just knock the door, be real casual, um, step back. So you're not like all up on the door, making them feel, you know, so step back a little yeah. bit and just introduce yourself like, hey, I was just reaching out. Um, we have several buyers because I have a property that just sold, right? And there, there were multiple offers on that property. So there's other buyers interested in purchasing over here. And we wanted to see, have you thought about if the numbers made sense and you were able to make a significant profit putting you know, your property up for sale? So have you thought about if the numbers made sense and you were able to make a significant profit putting your property up for sale. We could arrange a sale where you don't even have to put it on the market because you already have buyers, right? Yep. Uh, or you could actually put it on the market or you could buy it from them just as an investor. So you can yeah. give them different options. I really like how you phrased the question of, uh, have you thought about a situation in which uh, you would be willing to sell for a significant process? So have you thought about if the numbers made sense and you were able to make a significant profit putting your house up for sale? So have you thought about if the numbers made sense for you and you were able to make a significant profit putting your house up for sale? And like one thing I always tell people is you have to educate people about the market. So if they've been in the if they've owned their property and you're going to know how long they've owned it because you can see their sale date, right? So I would have, I would be prepared with a script for each bracket of time period. So my time period brackets would be pre-2008. So if somebody's owned the house before 2008, what I would say to them is, oh my gosh, like, I don't know if you know, but right now the prices are better than they've ever been in the last 30 years, right? You saw the market crash because the market crashed in 2008. You were able to keep your house through that crash. Now, the prices that we are seeing are better than they've been in the last 30 years. Have you thought about if the numbers made sense and you were able to make a significant profit, putting your house up for sale and getting that equity out before the market shifts back downward again and you lose that equity? Right, because they've been, they've seen that shift happen between 2008, 2012, 
So they saw it just all their equity was gone during that time. Now you have an opportunity to get the most that you could ever have gotten since you've owned the property. Now, real estate is cyclical, right? It shifts upward and downward. So we are going to see the market correct itself and go back down. Do you want to get your equity out before that market shifts and you lose that equity? Right? Because it they didn't, they held it through the downturn. Now get it out before it goes back down. Okay. Now, if, if they bought between 2008, 2012, oh my gosh, you're like a real estate guru, right? Everybody wants to buy low, sell high. So they bought low. If they bought between 2008, 2012, they bought at the lowest point that we've seen because we were in almost like a depression, right? Sure. So, hey, now's the time. Everybody wants to buy low, sell high. You bought at the lowest point. Now we're at the highest point we've seen in the last 30 years. Have you thought about if the numbers made sense and you were able to make a significant profit putting your house up for sale, getting your equity out before the market shifts back downward and you lose the equity that you have in it, All right? Now, people that are four years or so, so they bought 2012 to current, right? You say the same thing, but if they're under like a four-year period and they're really not in their forever home, you can let them know that people are selling their houses and making a profit just owning them for a year because we've seen such a significant appreciation year over year. So have you, it's the same question. Have you thought about if the numbers made sense and you were able to make a significant profit, putting your house up for sale and getting your equity out now before the market shifts and you lose that equity? Yeah. So that's the question that, that you're gonna much. ask people. <laughs> right. And you just you deposit some value at first because it's always like this. I don't just come out and ask people questions, right? I always tell everyone, think about an ATM machine or withdrawing money from your bank account, however you do it. You can't pull money out. That's a question. You can't pull money out unless you've deposited money in first, right? So I can't pull money out and ask you a question unless I've deposited you some value first. So my deposit of value is I'm educating you about the market. Right. Telling you what it's going. And then I'm going to ask the question after I educate you. So what do you do when you're faced with, uh, not, not the owner, but you're faced with the, um, with the renter? So the renter is an opportunity to be a buyer. Hey, the interest rates are lower than they've ever been. Like it's really cheap to buy property. Have you thought about building your own equity? Cause right now, you know what you're doing? You're paying a mortgage, yeah. but you're paying somebody else's mortgage. You're creating equity so, for them. Do you want to take your money and buy your own investment. And every month when you're paying the mortgage, it's your own mortgage. Right. right? So that would be um, what I would say to somebody who's not the owner. And then try to get that owner's contact information from them. Yeah, most of the time, what I ran into is that they don't actually have the owner's number. They have- well, it's the like a property number. management, yeah. And then you call the property manager and they say, I'll get back to you and then they die. Right. Yeah. And follow up and yeah, it's not great. That's what the reverse lookup tool is for. So you can get straight to the seller? Yeah, we'll go straight to the seller. But I mean, there's an opportunity to get a buyer. If you're, if there's, you could get, you could kill two birds with one stone if you knock that property as a tenant in there and they decide to buy and that seller decides to sell. Right. That's very, very helpful. Awesome. Any other questions that you can think of? Um, your reverse lookup tool. Uh, I imagine you've used a couple of them. Which tool do you prefer? Is that a tool that's um, available through eXp? Um, which tool would you recommend? So I know eXp has a seller suite through um, KV Core, and I'm not sure if they have a reverse lookup. I have Boomtown, which is a CRM, and I have a seller suite through Boomtown, and I'm able to do reverse lookup through that. And I've always used Boomtown for the last 11 years, so I've never had to use anything else. So I'm not sure what other services are out there, but I know people do reverse lookup all the time. Okay. So I'm sure there's some good ones out there. Um, if anybody's watching this video and they want to comment on a good reverse lookup tool, please do so. Okay. Um, 
And in terms of leads, I know working at EXP, talk about how they provide leads all the time. Is there a way through our EXP systems that we can, I guess, uh, filter what type of leads we're looking for in the, the right areas? Right, so is, do you have your KV Core website set up? Um, probably not. Okay, so once you get your KV Core website set up, they're gonna just, you're gonna get leads just for being a part of EXP, right? Because they're okay. doing marketing and they send the leads out to agents, complimentary. There's not like a ton that's gonna come through, but you are gonna get some complimentary leads. They have the option for you to pay for additional leads. There's a making it rain program that you can sign up for to get okay. additional leads. So I would reach out to the technology department on Monday, go in, they can help you set your website up. Then you're at least getting the free leads. And then if you wanna pay for additional um, leads, you can do that and you can specify like what areas and stuff you're interested in marketing to. That sounds very good, that sounds helpful. Anything else you can think of? No, you killed it. Thank you so much. All right. So I'm going to stop the recording. Then I'm going to stop.